So welcome everyone to the Encore presentation with the four non-regional candidates for federal council. We have uh, Dave Bagler and Kate Story running for fund representative and Darcy Lantier and John Kidder running for VP English. In terms of a territorial announcement, uh, today we have Green Party members joining us from all across Canada. We acknowledge that no matter where we are and where we live, we all are on traditional lands, in many cases unceded lands, that for thousands of years were under the sole stewardship of the many Indigenous nations that live in this vast country. We're grateful these peoples cared for these lands for millennia, ensuring the land remained healthy and abundant in its many gifts. We gratefully acknowledge that the wisdom, the care, and the love of these First Peoples is a reason why the nation we now know as Canada is a land of abundance, freedom, and peace. Gila Kesla. You want me to go ahead? Yes, please. Uh, bonjour tout le monde, bienvenue à cette deuxième réunion pour uh, les postes non régionaux, incluant ce que vous avez dit en deux. Euh, on commence par une déclaration de reconnaissance. Donc, euh, aujourd'hui, nous avons des membres du Parti vert qui se joignent à nous de partout au Canada. Nous reconnaissons que peu importe où nous sommes et où nous vivons, nous sommes sur des terres traditionnelles et dans plusieurs cas, des territoires non cédés qui ont été sous gouvernance des nombreux peuples autochtones qui vivent dans notre vaste pays. Nous sommes reconnaissants à ces peuples pour les soins qu'ils ont prodigués à ces terres pour des millénaires, s'assurant que la terre était en santé et généreuse de ses cadeaux. Nous reconnaissons avec gratitude que la sagesse, les soins et l'amour donnés par ces premières nations sont la raison pour laquelle la nation que nous reconnaissons maintenant sous le nom de Canada est une terre d'abondance, de liberté et de paix. Guy Lacaisse, là. Thanks very much, Jean-Charles. And for everyone, that is Jean-Charles Pelland, and he's going to be doing interpretation for us tonight. So... Some housekeeping details. The caveat is that we are not professionals at this. We are volunteers with the EDA of North Island Powell River, which we affectionately call Nipper. We're doing this in good faith to be as fair and as open as we can be in presenting you with the candidates for federal council. Jean-Charles? Oh, I didn't know I was supposed to translate that. Uh, So, euh, ben, donc, euh, merci tout le monde d'être ici, simplement pour euh, vous avertir qu'il n'y a personne ici qui est euh, payé pour faire quoi que ce soit. Donc, c'est tout du travail de la part de bénévoles qui font leur possible, en particulier euh, l'association de circonscription. Euh, which writing are you in, sorry? North Island Paul River. North Island Paul River. Donc, c'est surtout des bénévoles de North Island Paul River qui organisent ça, euh, qui organisent l'événement euh, pour permettre à tout le monde de connaître un peu plus sur les candidats. Donc, simplement être conscient que c'est du travail de bénévoles. Merci. Some of you may not be aware, but this is the second Zoom with John, Darcy, Dave, and Kate, who are running for federal council. Donc, certains d'entre vous sont peut-être pas au courant, mais c'est la deuxième réunion Zoom dans laquelle on peut en apprendre davantage sur John Kidder, Dave Bagler, Darcy Lantier, ainsi que Kate Story. In the first session, we only got to four or five questions. I think it was four. And so this one, as an encore event, will be running for two hours. And we're hoping to get a few more questions in. Lors de la première rencontre, on a réussi à répondre à environ quatre ou cinq questions et on trouvait que c'était passé. C'est pour ça qu'il y en a une deuxième qui est organisée ce soir. On espère euh, pouvoir répondre à une autre quatre ou cinq questions et ça devrait durer maximum deux heures ce soir. OK. And as I mentioned, uh, Carol Thatcher is going to be the timekeeper and all of the candidates have her in your sights. You have three minutes to answer each question in English and French, collectively. Um, donc, Carol Thatcher, que vous voyez, que certains d'entre vous voyez euh, en haut de votre écran, est celle qui va garder le temps. Chaque candidat a trois minutes pour répondre à chaque question dans les deux langues. At two minutes, 30 seconds, Carol is going to wave an orange card. At two minutes and 50 seconds, Carol is going to wave a red card. And at three minutes, Carol is going to mute your microphone. So be aware that <laughs> it could be JC who is being cut off at three minutes. So we really do want to get through as many questions as possible today. So we're going to be um, kind of rigid about the timekeeping. Donc simplement pour mentionner qu'on va être très rigide sur qu'est-ce qui est euh, question de gestion du temps. 
euh, Carol Thatcher va euh, montrer une pancarte orange quand que ça fait deux minutes et demie que la personne parle, euh, suivie d'une pancarte euh, rouge quand que ça fait deux minutes cinquante, et quand ça fait trois minutes, en théorie, euh, la personne euh, aura son micro euh, euh, muté, euh, ou en tout cas, la personne n'aura plus d'audio qui sortira de, de son feed pour ainsi limiter euh, le temps que chaque personne parle et s'assurer que l'événement euh, ne dépasse pas trop dans le temps. OK, and for the participants, you can use the chat window to uh, pose questions. Mark De Bruin will be monitoring the chat, uh, mining it for good questions, which in our previous experience, there have been a lot. Donc, euh, ceux et celles de, qui participent à l'événement aujourd'hui, qui voudraient poser des questions, vous pouvez vous servir de l'onglet chat pour euh, en, mettre vos questions. Et euh, il y a un modérateur qui va choisir des questions qui semblent les plus pertinentes pour les poser aux candidats. And though we are going to entertain questions about governance, we are not going to be discussing the Carver model in this Zoom session. Uh, il est important de mentionner qu'on ne va pas discuter uh, du modèle Carver durant cette session Zoom. Uh, on va pouvoir parler de modèle de gouvernance, uh, oui, mais pas spécifiquement du modèle Carver, uh, puisqu'on a déjà porté notre attention sur ce sujet lors de la dernière rencontre. Okay, I think that's all the housekeeping. Are there any questions from the candidates? Okay, so the first question, um, oh, there is one other housekeeping thing. We are going to sort of bundle together John and Darcy as VP English and Dave and Kate as the fund representatives. So you will be consecutive each, each time. Euh, simplement euh, mentionner que les euh, candidats pour la vice-présidence anglo vont parler dans un bloc et par la suite, les candidats pour trésorière, trésorier euh, vont parler dans un autre bloc là, lors des réponses aux questions. OK. Thank you, Jean-Charles. So, the first question is, what do you see as your primary responsibility as a member of Federal Council and the job for which you are applying? Donc, la première question, euh, que voyez-vous euh, comme étant vos premières responsabilités au sein du Conseil fédéral euh, dans le cadre du poste pour lequel vous postulez. And we will start with John. OK. Well, the primary responsibility of any counselor or any director on any board anywhere is to ensure that the organization itself is properly governed. I'm not going to get into details of Carver. We've talked about that before. But in all models, the job of directors is they have two fundamental duties, a duty of care, a duty of loyalty. Don't need to go into that. We know what those are. Really, the job of the board collectively and of counselors individually is to work with management, staff, to have a, come to a clear understanding of what strategic objectives are for the coming period, whether that's a quarter of a year or a long year, five year plan, to have, whoops, I forgot to start my timer here, I'm gonna be out of time, um, to come to a very clear understanding of what those objectives are. And that's, an, that's by agreement, it's not by uh, rubber stamping, it's a workup that's done by the board and by staff to then review periodically with staff, all senior staff, how objectives are being met, how progress is being made against key performance indicators, and to, keep, to exercise the duty of kind of insight, oversight, foresight. That's what boards are for. The second objective of any board is to report to its stakeholders. In our case, that's the members of the Green Party, the EDAs, et cetera, on how that work is going. And to do that reporting in a regular way at an organized format so that people know what they expect. So there's two real jobs. One is to represent the members, to take collectively from the members what their wishes are, the stakeholders, to bring those to the strategic discussions and to set the objectives and the plan going forward, to monitor how staff are doing against that and to provide the best advice possible, not direction. No one gets in and tells people specifically what to do, but you provide overall direction to get the results from that and feed it back to the members so the members understand what's been going on. Those three functions, getting input, providing direction, and reporting are the fundamental three things that any board must do. C'est la même chose en français. La, la responsabilité uh, première d'un conseil est de uh, um, attraper, ce n'est pas le même, apprendre de les stakeholders le sens, les directions pour le parti, pour l'organisation. Le, pour le, le, Et après ça, de faire avec le les, les manager, le les senior staff, uh, la le, le stratégie et la direction pour la période prochaine. 
Euh, après ça, de euh, entrer en discussion avec le, le management, le senior staff, pour voir le progrès against ses objectifs et la reporter à les membres, à les stakeholders. Et ça, c'est tout. En, en ces trois domaines sont toutes les responsabilités du conseil. Merci. Thanks, John. And Darcy, you're next. And please let JC know if you're going to need translation. Uh, yes, I am going to need translation, John Charles. It would be great to be working with you again. So, uh, Council, Council mostly focuses on strategic planning. Strategic planning and our fiduciary responsibilities, which is budgeting. Um, le conseil uh, a plusieurs responsabilités, incluant uh, le budget. Um, myself, personally, I, I've never been on the governance committee. I'm not on the HR committee, so I don't do either of those two things. Uh, my work on council has mostly been finance. I've been on the finance committee for four years. I've been the chair for the past two years. So um, I, I'm chair of the finance committee. I'm also the chair of the convention committee. So I've been working on that. Um, as a council of the whole, we of course oversee all of those things. I took, you know, when the leadership committee meets, then they come up with a recommendation, then the finance committee reviews it to see how it works with finance. The convention committee reviews it to see how we're going to make it fit with the conventions. Sorry, Jean-Charles. <laughs> And that's, it, it's like, uh, I'm sorry, if you can pause the time, Carol, for just one second, so I just talk to all the, the candidates. Thank you. Sorry to interrupt you, uh, Darcy. It's, uh, I, I just want people to be clear. I'm happy to try my best, but whenever you guys go on for more than about 10 to 15 seconds, it's really not possible for me to remember what you're saying. Um, so it's like, it's up to you guys. I know that sometimes a person is speaking and they get in the flow of what they're saying. And obviously you want to get your point across. That's fine. It's just, I won't be able to remember all the details that you guys are, are going with. So I can just summarize when, when you guys talk for longer, I'll just try to summarize what you said, but I can't really be asked to do anything more than that. So I just want it to be clear. I'm just trying my best here. Okay. Obviously. And thank you, Jean-Charles. And I do apologize. No, no, no. Don't apologize. Donc, je voulais simplement aux participants francophones, je, je donnais des directives aux, euh, aux panélistes et aux candidats pour que la, la traduction puisse se passer de manière la plus optimale. Donc, quand vous voyez des gens qui vont parler longtemps puis que moi qui parle pas aussi longtemps, c'est simplement parce que j'essaie de résumer leur point de vue. OK. So, I'm just going to go back. So, you were saying, uh, you were talking about finance. Donc, Darcy, son expertise et son expérience uh, est en termes de finances. Elle a siégé au conseil pendant quatre ans uh, en matière de finances. Donc, son expertise est dans ce domaine-là. OK. Thank you. So, as far as strategic planning, we did a lot of strategic planning leading up to the last election where we set our goals and targets, how much money to have in the bank, how to build capacity. Do we build capacity? Do we save money? Do we find a fine line in between the two? Donc, en termes de planification stratégique lors des dernières élections, c'est important de savoir combien d'argent qu'on a où et à quelles tâches on pouvait les dédier. Euh, c'est ça. So these are the things that council does. We set that plan, then we ensure that the, um, that the executive director follows that plan. Donc, c'est le genre de choses que le conseil fait. On dresse un portrait, on fait un plan, puis on s'assure que le directeur exécutif suive notre plan. Which is, of course, exactly what happened. We decided to build capacity. We wanted a minimum amount of money in the bank. We needed to be able to establish a certain line of credit based on what we were spending. Those are the things we did. Jean-Charles? Donc, c'est exactement ça qu'on a fait durant la dernière élection. On a planifié en termes de savoir combien il nous restait dans, euh, dans notre compte de banque et qu'est-ce qu'on pouvait investir dans quel domaine et s'assurer d'avoir communiqué ça avec le directeur. And that's exactly where we ended up, just where we wanted to be. Et donc, on a réussi à faire qu'est-ce qu'on voulait faire et c'est là, là qu'on a réussi à atteindre nos objectifs. Thanks very much, Darcy. Okay, Dave, you're next. Thanks, Megan, and thank you again for organizing this. Uh, Jean-Charles, I'll uh, use your translation uh, for these questions. Okay. Um, so I think that both John and Darcy have summarized the general role of a counselor well. Donc, moi, je pense que John et Darcy ont fait un très bon résumé des rôles de conseiller en général. You know, the council um, kind of owns the party in trust for the members in between AGMs. 
Donc, le conseil est celui qui retient l'essence du parti entre les deux AGA. And both of them refer to the fiduciary responsibility and the oversight commitments. Donc, les deux ont mentionné les responsabilités fiscales euh, que, qui adhèrent à tout membre du conseil. So, both of these positions are on federal council, but are also active as voting members of the executive committee. Donc, ces deux positions-là sont euh, au sein du conseil euh, fédéral, mais aussi au sein du conseil exécutif. Euh, du, euh, conseil exécutif ouais. And that committee meets more frequently that, than council normally does. Um, go ahead, and Michelle. Sorry. Le comité, est, le comité exécutif se rencontre beaucoup plus régulièrement que le Conseil euh, fédéral se rencontre. Uh, and can handle decisions in between council meetings that are then ratified uh, or not by federal council. Et donc, le comité exécutif peut prendre des décisions euh, entre les réunions du Conseil fédéral que le Conseil fédéral, par la suite, peut accepter d'entériner de, ou non. But the fund rep is also a member of the board of the Green Party of Canada fund. Donc, le, le trésorier est aussi un membre du conseil, uh, the what, sorry, the, which fund? Sorry. Green Party of Canada fund. Donc, le fonds du Parti vert du Canada. And that is a not-for-profit corporation that serves as our official agent. Et ça, c'est une corporation à but non lucratif qui sert comme, offici euh, comme agent officiel du parti. Uh, they're also the legal employer of all of the GPC's staff. C'est aussi l'employeur légal de tous les employés du Parti vert du Canada. And the fund rep must serve as a bridge between that body and federal council. Donc, le, le représentant des fonds, le trésorier, doit servir de lien, de pont entre le Conseil fédéral et cette organisation. And I believe that that comes, that brings some compliance responsibilities where the fund rep needs to be the person in the room who really knows those rules. Donc, euh, étant donné que c'est euh, un rôle de, de lien, si on veut, que joue le, le représentant des fonds, le trésorier, c'est important qu'il soit bien au courant des règlements qui régissent euh, l'organisation et euh, des affaires euh, quotidiennes de ces, de ces euh, conseils. Pardon. Thank you very much. Merci beaucoup. Perfect. Thanks, Dave. And Kate, you're up. Okay, Jean-Charles, I'd appreciate the translation. Um, okay, so the basic council responsibility, as we've heard, is to hire an executive director, work with that executive director to set goals, and monitor the achievement of the goals. Donc, parmi les objectifs principaux d'un membre du conseil, c'est d'engager un directeur exécutif, de le former et de setter des objectifs avec lui et de s'assurer que les objectifs soient atteints. As an individual counselor, um, my job is to first of all educate myself on all of the council processes, on the issues, on politics, on everything that the uh, council gets involved in. Donc, mon premier rôle va être de m'éduquer uh, en tant que membre du conseil sur tous les allées et venues et les règlements et les procédures uh, qui adhèrent au conseil fédéral. And a counselor has to always remember to put the interests of the party first. Un conseil doit toujours se rappeler de mettre les intérêts du parti en premier. Now, putting the interests of the party first um, means that we, we have to remember um, what those interests are. We can't come to council with our own agendas. Ça, ça veut dire, quand on parle de, de mettre les intérêts du parti en premier, ça veut dire de laisser nos propres intérêts personnels à l'extérieur et de toujours garder en tête quels sont les intérêts du parti. So, on council, um, in a meeting, my primary responsibility is to work collaboratively with all of the other councillors and the executive director. Donc, ma première tâche comme membre du conseil, c'est simplement de collaborer avec tous les autres membres du conseil et avec le directeur exécutif. Especially in the Green Party, where we, we try to use consensus um, because we value those diverse ideas because no one has the one right idea. Et c'est surtout vrai euh, dans un parti comme le Parti Vert, où est-ce qu'on on, on met beaucoup de valeur dans la diversité euh, des idées et qu'il n'y a pas une seule personne qui a toujours raison. We, we have a strong council and then a strong party when we learn to listen work together and collectively makes good decisions. Le parti et donc le conseil et donc le parti 
euh, va être fort quand on va apprendre à écouter tout le monde, écouter toutes les idées et arriver à un consensus qui représente les intérêts de tous. As a counselor, um, I would have to work on committees. I personally have worked on many of the committees on council. Donc, euh, comme membre du conseil, il faudrait que je travaille sur, euh, que je, je siège sur plusieurs comités. C'est bon parce que j'ai déjà de l'expertise à siéger sur plusieurs comités. And I, you're going to have to stop me because I've lost the little uh, vi video of, uh, or of Carol. <laughs> um, so tell me if I run out of time. Um, uh, yeah, I'm seeing red. <laughs> <laughs> yes, you're, you're pretty much out of time. Okay. <laughs> Thanks. Try to get her back. Yeah, so just hit on the little right arrow, and I noticed that she moved. I don't, I don't know why the order gets changed. Thanks, Kate. The second question, again, for all the candidates is, um, as you know, there's a wide range of opinion as to the Green Party's performance in the 2019 election. How do you view the results and what could improve our success in the next election? And we'll start with Darcy. Donc, euh, simplement pour traduire la, la deuxième question ce soir, euh, est, qui est destinée à tous les candidats, c'est comme vous le savez, il y a beaucoup d'opinions divergentes sur la performance du Parti vert en 2019. Comment voyez-vous les résultats de l'élection et comment pourrions-nous avoir plus de succès aux prochaines élections? La première personne à répondre va être Darcy. So I have an East Coast perspective. I was the PEI rep going into the, uh, into the election and coming out of it. And Donc, on the East Coast... De, de la côte Est. Sorry, I interrupted you, but I just... Good. No, that's good, Jean-Charles. Very good. Um, donc, moi, j'ai une perspective de la côte Est. J'étais chef de l'île du Prince-Édouard où est-ce qu'on a eu des bons résultats. In Atlantic Canada in 2015, we had one federal riding that received 10% of the vote. En 2015, on a eu une circonscription qui avait eu plus que 10% du vote. That was Fredericton. We now have an MP there. Ça, c'était à Fredericton, puis maintenant, on a une ministre à Fredericton. In 2019, we had 20 of the 24 maritime ridings got 10% of the vote. En 2019, il y a 20 des 24 euh, circonscriptions qui ont eu plus que 10% du vote. 250 000 in Elections Canada um, rebates flowed into the Maritime Green Party EDAs. This is an unprecedented amount of money. Donc, euh, une somme d'argent qui n'a euh, jamais été récoltée euh, auparavant par le parti euh, a été récoltée dans euh, les maritimes. On parle de 250 000 qui ont euh, pu être euh, renflouer les coffres des associations de circonscription euh, grâce au programme de rabais d'Élections Canada. Four of us play second. So we got an MP and four of us play second. For the Maritimes, this is um, it's, it's an astounding result. Extremely positive. Donc, euh, pour les maritimes, les résultats sont extrêmement positifs et vraiment incroyables. Euh, il y a quatre d'entre nous qui sont, sommes arrivés deuxième et une personne qui a été élue. Could we have done better? Absolutely. We could have elected more MPs, and if we had, I'd probably be one of them. Est-ce qu'on aurait pu faire mieux? Probablement. Euh, et si on avait eu plus de personnes élues, je serais probablement une de ces personnes-là. We are identifying support at 56% in July, and it gradually tapered off. On avait 56% de soutien en juillet, mais graduellement, malheureusement, ça a diminué. A lot of it was fear-based voting. Very hard to overcome fear-based voting in Atlantic Canada. Malheureusement, une des forces que menées à cette diminution, c'est le vote basé sur la peur, et c'est très difficile de lutter contre le vote basé sur la peur dans le Canada atlantique. And of course, many mistakes were made. Et évidemment, il y a eu plusieurs erreurs. We can do better. And we will because we now have 20 EDAs that have bank balances that never ever had them before. On peut certainement s'améliorer et on va s'améliorer compte tenu du fait qu'il y a maintenant 20 ACE qui ont énormément d'argent et plus d'argent qui ont jamais eu. Merci. Thank you Darcy and John go ahead. Mm. Well, um, I was a candidate as well, and we got 
10.2%. So we got some money back and we did that in a riding full of rednecks and diesel trucks and gun racks. And so we did all right. But the personal perspective of any individual candidate, the personal perspective of any individual campaign manager, the personal perspective even of someone like Darcy who has all that experience in the Maritimes is useful. It's all helpful. But what needs to be done and what the job of council is, is to ensure that all of the information available about this election is pulled together, summarized, analyzed objectively, so that we don't start making conclusions based on all of our own imperfect data. This is what got the work of governance actually is. Let's make sure the information is there. That means, to my mind, we should take the survey that the party has done, which really, in my view, and maybe uh, not the view of others, really went out to say, how well did you use the tools the party made available to you and were they satisfactory? That was one. We should also be using the stuff that the uh, the members for growth and renewal pulled together um, when they went really and looked at things to say, what did we do that didn't work? And they collected a whole pile of data as well. Neither of those is sufficient in themselves. Neither of those is complete. Um, what we need to do is to have, again, in my view, an objective third party analysis of what we did in this election. We start with looking at the strategy, we look at the tactics, we look at how those things were executed, we look at the results we got, and we look at how we interpret those results. And only with that sort of thorough analysis will we gain insight into what we did right, what we did wrong, what we need to do better the next time. Each of those things is critical, and it is absolutely imperative that as counselors, none of us is prepared to jump to conclusions based on personal experience. That's not our job. Our job is to collect and analyze information and give direction based on that, and to feed that back to the people who operate elections to say, this is what we see as the governing board of the party. This is how we think we should move forward next time. Uh, I'm not sure how much time I have left, Carol, because I failed to start my clock. Uh, I have 30 seconds. Je sais en français. En français, nous sommes à un moment critical. Si nous faisons des décisions sur la prochaine élection, Avec la possibilité d'information que nous avons maintenant, ça ne marche pas. Il faut que nous euh, prenions l'opportunité pour faire une analyse objective de toutes sortes de l'information de toute la partie. Nous, beaucoup d'informations est disponible et c'est notre job, notre travail de le faire, de le, euh, l'attraper pour faire une bonne analyse objective sur toute la partie. Oui, merci. Perfect, John. Thank you. And uh, Kate, you're next. Okay, so as far as how we did, oh, Jean, Jean Charles, can you translate? Okay, as far as how we did, I thought we did moderately well. Donc, uh, pour l'aspect de la question, uh, comment on a performé, je trouve qu'on a performé correctement. I, I could see going into the election, anybody with political experience could see going into the election, we had a big gap in our election readiness. Our election what, sorry? Readiness. Ah, okay. Uh, donc, n'importe qui avec de l'expérience en politique peut avoir observé qu'en rentrant dans les élections, on avait un grand gap, donc un grand fossé entre, entre qu'est-ce qu'on devait faire et à quel point on était prêt pour le faire. Our local campa- campaigns were... Um, getting better. Uh, many were quite good, but we didn't have enough very strong campaigns to expect uh, a strong showing in the, in the election. Donc, il euh, y avait euh, certaines campagnes locales qui étaient très fortes. Il y en avait d'autres qui étaient correctement préparées, mais on n'en avait pas qui étaient assez fortes pour vraiment pouvoir s'attendre à faire des gros gains. So, going forward, I think we need to have two types of analysis. Donc, pour euh, continuer et pour avancer, je pense qu'il faut qu'on ait deux sortes d'analyses. So, first of all, we need an objective political analysis by political ex- experts. Premièrement, je pense qu'on a besoin d'avoir une, euh, une analyse faite par des experts en politique. Some of our, our counselors have had a lot of experience in politics, some have not. So, we really must um, have outside objective expert advice. Certains nos conseillers beaucoup d'expérience en politique, d'autres non. Donc c'est vraiment important qu'on ait euh, un point de vue extérieur objectif sur euh, notre parti. 
And the second kind of analysis we need is a structural analysis. Et la seconde, le, le, la deuxième euh, analyse qu'on a besoin, c'est une analyse structurelle. So a structural analyst looks at an organization and checks to see if um, the processes and the actions and everything that, in, that uh, the party involves are up to the task that we want to achieve. Donc, une analyse structurelle, qu'est-ce que ça fait en gros? C'est que ça analyse euh, nos actions et, euh, ça, euh, et ça vérifie à quel point ces actions-là sont capables de mener à bon port euh, par rapport aux objectifs qui sont censés euh, atteindre. So it's really hard to look at one's own mistakes, but I want to encourage the party and council to look at the MGNR report and um, learn from it. Donc, ce n'est pas toujours facile de, de constater, de regarder ses propres erreurs, mais je recommande fortement et je pense que c'est important que tout le monde jette un coup d'œil euh, au rapport produit par euh, les membres pour le, euh, le Members for Growth and... Uh, what is it again? Sorry? Renewal. Renewal euh, les membres pour le, le, la croissance et le renouvellement euh, qui est disponible sur Internet. Thank you. Merci. OK, thank you. And Dave, you're next. I think when we saw the quarterly fundraising results and the national polling, uh, go ahead, JC. Uh, quand on a vu au fait les sondages nationaux ainsi que les résultats euh, du euh, financier, euh, euh, quarterly, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm finishing quarterly. Um, I, I think that we, we raised our expectations for the seat count I think a lot of people found the seat count disappointing. Donc, une fois qu'on a vu qu'est-ce qui se passait dans les sondages, qu'on on a élevé nos attentes par rapport au nombre de sièges qu'on pouvait, on pensait pouvoir aller chercher, on a été déçu quand on n'a pas atteint ce, ce, ce nombre-là. But over a million Canadians voted for us, and more ridings than ever crossed the 10% threshold. Mais c'est important de garder en tête qu'il y a plus d'un million de Canadiens qui ont voté pour nous et euh, énormément de circonscriptions ont eu plus de 10% du vote. And when a riding gets more than 10%, they get 60% of their campaign expenses back, which is a huge boost. Et il ne faut pas oublier que quand une circonscription euh, obtient plus que 10% du vote, euh, on sait que Élections Canada donne un rabais de 60% des dépenses. Donc, c'est un gros boost pour les finances de cette circonscription-là. There is no way I can get into detail on my perspective on this campaign in the time available. Pas du tout le temps de vous donner ma perspective sur la campagne précédente dans un laps de temps aussi court. Email or call me if you want to hear more because it's something we can talk about forever. Euh, je serais heureux dans le jaser avec vous, donc euh, envoyez-moi un courriel ou appelez-moi. But I appreciate that federal council has already committed to an independent review of the election and that over 2,500 people have already responded to the survey. Donc, j'apprécie, je remarque que le Conseil fédéral a déjà euh, accepté de livrer une analyse d'un parti tiers et qu'il y a plus de 2,000 personnes qui ont répondu au sondage. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay, now we're going to go to the audience. And uh, Mark, have you found a good question? Yes, I've got uh, a couple of questions from Paul Wilson, and I'm going to combine them because they one leads right into the other. So his question is this, if federal council sets end goals, when do the membership get to know what these goals are? And how do the candidates see involving membership in developing these goals? Et je vais essayer de traduire, donc, euh, la question qui vient euh, du public serait la suivante. Euh, si le Conseil fédéral détermine les objectifs principaux du parti, quand est-ce que les membres peuvent euh, euh, savoir quels sont ces objectifs et comment est-ce que les candidats se voient euh, impliquer les membres dans le développement de ces objectifs? OK, we'll start with Dave Bagler this time. Sorry, Megan, I'm, I'm having a bunch of audio issues here. Um, so 
Sorry, can you can you repeat, please? Sure. Um, I think as Mark read it, if the federal council sets end goals, when do the membership get to know what these goals are and how do the candidates see involving the membership in developing these goals? Okay, sorry, I, I still didn't get all of that, but is it about when do members find out about goals? Yes. Okay, thanks. <laughs> sorry about that, everybody. I don't know what the... Um, so JC, I'll, I'll uh, need uh, translation. Um, I don't think members are aware of goals enough right now. Uh, I believe that regional reps need to treat the Greens and the provincial party, if there is one, in their region as constituents. Je pense que les euh, représentants régionaux doivent compter euh, les maires et aussi les maires provinciaux comme euh, électeurs potentiels. And if there isn't a generally agreed upon need for some goal to be kept confidential, uh, then those, those regional reps should be informing their constituents. Et donc, s'il n'y a aucune raison évidente pour qu'un objectif soit euh, gardé secret, euh, les représentants régionaux devraient en informer leurs membres. And I think different groups of members are going to want to get those updates uh, in different ways. Je pense qu'il y a différents groupes de membres qui vont vouloir uh, avoir des updates ou être tenus au courant de différentes manières. Euh, manières pardon. But in the meantime, I think the best thing to do is to observe council meetings. Mais en attendant, la meilleure chose à faire, c'est simplement d'observer uh, les rencontres du conseil. I have learned so much because I have observed each of the meetings since the election about decisions that are being made. Moi, j'ai tellement appris euh, parce que j'ai regardé chaque rencontre du conseil depuis les dernières élections et euh, je comprends mieux comment que les décisions sont prises. And I hope that everybody who's interested in this election emails governance at greenparty.ca and asks to be added to the observers list. J'espère que tout le monde qui est intéressé dans l'élection va envoyer un courriel à governance a commercial uh, greenparty.ca. Uh, I don't know if there's one in French. Je ne sais pas s'il y en a une en français, mais enfin, pour signifier leur intérêt de pouvoir observer les réunions du conseil. Uh, je pense que c'est gouvernance à partir de la Okay. Um, for me, I believe that the more members are observing federal council and discussing federal council decisions with their personal green networks, the more we're going to have a greater and my di more diverse understanding about how members feel about federal council decisions, uh, including what any end or, or goals uh, are set by council. Donc, moi, je pense sincèrement que le plus qu'il y a des membres qui s'investissent et regardent les, les procédés, les procédures euh, des, des rencontres du Conseil fédéral, le plus que ça va être euh, possible pour nous d'avoir des objectifs qui représentent les intérêts des membres. But to me, it's absolutely imperative that members and EDAs know how they connect to the goals that federal council sets. Mais pour moi, c'est absolument crucial que les membres et les ACE connectent avec les objectifs du Conseil fédéral. Thank you. Thank, thanks very much, Dave. And Kate, go ahead. Okay, JC, I appreciate yeah. it. Um, Okay, so our basic goals are available to every, for everyone to see on, in the Constitution, but those are very general goals about electing MPs and pushing our policy. Um, Donc, nos, nos objectifs principaux sont disponibles. Tout le monde peut les voir, sont dans la Constitution, mais c'est des objectifs qui sont vraiment généraux, comme euh, faire élire des, des, euh, des ministres. The challenge is always to get counsel to talk about, to, to expand on those goals. Le défi, c'est toujours euh, que le conseil puisse euh, euh, prendre position et développer ses objectifs. Uh, Counselors uh, come to council expecting that that's what we're going to do. We're going to develop the goals and figure out what the party will do and when exactly. Donc, les conseillers, au fait, c'est ça leur attente, c'est qu'ils peuvent aller euh, au conseil pour justement savoir quand exactement et, et comment développer les objectifs du parti. And, and then council gets 
stuck in the in, in the day to day, and we rarely get around to really an in depth discussion of those goals. That has to change. Mais malheureusement, qu'est-ce qui arrive souvent, c'est que le conseil finit par s'enfarger dans les, les, les actions quotidiennes et les détails quotidiens, et ça arrive rarement que les objectifs principaux sont discutés. Ça, ça doit changer. As far as the membership goes, I would like to see an EDA-focused convention. Donc, euh, concernant les membres, moi, ce que j'aimerais voir, c'est une convention qui est axée sur les ACF. I could see a whole day set aside for electoral district associations uh, representatives actually discussing how they see the goals of the party. Moi, je verrais facilement une journée au complet dédiée à, à offrir euh, aux directeurs des associations de circonscription pour qu'ils puissent discuter entre eux et savoir quel, euh, quelle est leur perspective sur les objectifs principaux du parti. So that's what I'm pushing for. I'm pushing for engagement with the local campaign teams, the EDA executives, uh, whether it's on committees or at convention or in our uh, email. There has to be a way. Donc moi vraiment c'est c'est pour ça que je pousse. Moi c'est pour ça que je me présente. C'est pour euh, qu'on puisse avoir plus de, de connaissances à savoir quelles sont les positions et les priorités euh, des membres et surtout des associations de circonscription. So I think once we start discussing the goals with the membership, that's when we'll start really involving people and building the party. Moi je pense que une fois qu'on commence à euh, discuter avec les membres, c'est là qu'on va pouvoir les impliquer et la faire. Thank you. Merci. Megan, you're muted. Sorry. There is discussion happening in the chat, and so you might want to just keep an eye on there. There are some interesting questions in there. Okay, John, go ahead. All right, I have my timer going. Okay, here's a kind of a summary of, of best practice on lots of boards that do this kind of thing. In the last quarter of the year, the last three months, there's an objective exercise taken on by council and by senior staff, not just an ED, but all the senior staff, to do what's called, there's various jargon for it, but it's often called a strengths, weaknesses, opportunity, and threats analysis. It's called a SWOT analysis. So you look at where are the strengths in the organization? Where are the weaknesses in the organization? The strength you want to build up, the weaknesses you want to fill, what opportunities look like they're coming up for us in the next year, and what do we think is going to threaten us? If, for instance, do we see a rising environmental party called something else? Um, that information is gathered by council and by staff. At the same time, there's something that goes out to members, this is in, in the nonprofit world, and says, what do you think are the strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats? How do you want to contribute to this analysis? Those, if that, all that information is pulled together, and this is hard work, and it, over the course of a quarter, you develop a sense of what the strategic opportunities, the strategic needs are for the operation. Then, going back to the points that Darcy made, you work with staff to work up a budget, where you think your revenues are coming from, what do you think your expenses are going to be, how do you try to meet those strategic objectives, and you cudgel the thing, you bring it out, da, 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 you, and you come up with a plan. By the first month of the year, of the new fiscal year, you should have a budget derived from that plan, and that budget and that plan should then be circulated to stakeholders. It's no secret. It's put out to the stakeholders. This is what you've asked us for. We've come together with our best expertise. We have generated this plan. And in this plan, as in all models of governance, there are key performance indicators. We call them different things, but that's what they are. This is how we're going to mark what we do. Then, council will carry on, in, in my view, properly, and report to stakeholders periodically. You meet with management all the time, executives once a month, as Dave says, general uh, committee reports, et cetera, once a quarter, whatever the appropriate period is, and you report to stakeholders on what 
is going on. Here's the financial side, here's the strategic side, and that goes out to the members every time. At the end of the year, you do the full reporting again. And this time you provide full audit of financial statements. They go off to the fund that then it goes off to Elections Canada. They go out with a management analysis and discussion. All of these are done routinely by millions of little companies, much smaller than the Green Party, all over the world, all the time. There's nothing unusual about this and there's nothing very particularly demanding about it. It's just a discipline and a rigor and a process that has to be put in place that gets to go to work. Um, and then at the end of the year, you also do a full 360 degree evaluation of senior staff, of council, of committees, etc. And none of this is done to look for blame. It's not favor or blame. It's about objective analysis of how things can work better. Okay, thank you, John. And uh, Darcy, go ahead. Well, as John said, most of those things are exactly what happens. That's exactly what happens at the finance committee. We meet every month. We review the, the, the occurrences of the previous month. Uh, quarterly, we review the quarterly statements. We meet first, then we submit them to council. They are uh, presented at a council meeting. They go out in advance uh, with the agenda for the meeting. That's how it does happen, of course, because that's what we do. As far as uh, the convention, Dar Darcy, uh, I'm just going to interrupt you for Jean-Charles. Sure. Oh, sorry. Sorry, Jean-Charles. Uh, that's fine. I thought that you uh, you didn't need me for the... I'm, I'm happy to, to start now if you want. I just I don't to... need you, Jean-Charles. Je ne parle pas façon. It's, uh, it's a tragedy. I spoke when I was a kid and then I forgot. Okay. So uh, I'll, I'll start now then. Okay. So... Uh, Kate mentioned uh, an EDA focused convention. That's really interesting because I'm the chair of the convention committee and Kate has never once suggested that that would be her goal or her desire. We have actually had a couple of convention committee meetings and our focus for the convention is diversity and inclusion. There's a, a, a significant, oh sorry, Jean-Charles. Okay. Uh, donc, Kate a mentionné qu'elle voulait faire une convention avec les membres d'ACE. Uh, simplement mentionné que moi, je suis sur le comité uh, des uh, conventions et que je n'ai jamais entendu parler d'une telle suggestion, mais que je pense que ce serait une bonne idée. Um, we, uh, we had a, at our last meeting, we have a Young Green on the committee, which is fantastic. We decided to bring the Young Greens AGM into convention. Uh, on the Friday night so that Young Greens would be able to attend to get them there at the start of the convention. Donc, à la dernière convention, il y avait un membre des Jeunes Verts qui était là avec nous. C'était fantastique. Et on a décidé donc de déplacer euh, l'AGA euh, des Jeunes Verts à l'intérieur de la convention. Of course, a large part of the convention would also be to honor our outgoing leader, Elizabeth May, for her service over time. Évidemment, une convention euh, devra aussi euh, dédier beaucoup de temps et de ressources à notre euh, ancienne leader, Elizabeth May, qui a fait énormément de travail pour nous au fil des ans. A good portion of the convention was uh, designated for our leadership race, all our new leadership candidates, of course. Évidemment, une autre portion de la convention euh, allait être dédiée euh, à la course à la chefferie et à euh, nos chefs, évidemment, les candidats. And uh, a significant amount of uh, workshop time focused on training. Uh, it is uh, certainly our hope and it was our intention to reach out to all the EDAs that got Elections Canada refunds to encourage them to send at least one or two representatives. Donc, euh, on voulait que les, euh, les associations de circonscription qui ont obtenu plus de 10% du vote envoient un ou deux représentants euh, à la convention pour qu'ils soient euh, disponibles à, aux autres. As these are the 49 EDAs that need to be built to prepare them for the next election. This would be our focus at convention for training to make sure they had people there. Donc notre focus euh, à la prochaine convention serait vraiment la formation, former, mieux former les ACE et en particulier les 49 ACE qui ont eu plus que 10% du vote pour qu'ils soient prêts pour les prochaines élections. I've been the PEI rep for four years. In four years, we've had an 800% increase in members on Prince Edward Island. Donc, moi, je suis la représentante de l'île du Prince Edward depuis quatre ans, et en quatre ans, on a eu 800% d'augmentation de, de membres. And okay. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, okay. Darcy, I'm going to have I can't to see her anymore, so. Oh, uh, if you click on the... Au revoir. Yeah. I'm not going to do that. Okay, thank you. 
Okay, Mark, do we have another question from the audience? Yes, Megan, I have a question here from Jan Slackov, who is asking, what is your, and this is specifically for John and Darcy, what is your vision for the relationship between the president and the VP with council, with staff, with the party leader, and with party members? You want me to repeat that? Uh, no, I got it. Uh, la prochaine question serait de Jan Slackov, uh, et ça serait spécifiquement pour John et Darcy. Donc, la question serait, quelle est votre vision pour la relation entre le président et le VP, d'une part, et le conseil, les employés, le chef du parti et les membres, d'autre part? Okay. Um, we'll go with that. Um, hopefully, there is a question that will be applicable to Dave and Kate as well then. Um, Darcy, do you want to start with this one? Sure thing. So the executive does consist of the executive director, the current leader, so right now the interim leader, uh, both of the vice presidents and the fund rep. So Donc, le conseil exécutif en ce moment inclut la chef. Uh, le directeur général uh, et, um, I'm sorry, I forgot the others, mais essentiellement, elle donne la composition du conseil en ce moment. Yeah, the VP French, the VP English, the leader, the ED, and the fund rep. Donc, uh, vice-président français, vice-président anglais, uh, um, uh, trésorier et uh, leader, chef. When we meet as the executive, as opposed to when we are sitting as a full federal council, or in our roles on our committees, the executive specifically meets um, in between the federal council meetings to improve the efficiency and the effectiveness of council. There's a job description right on the website. I suggest everyone should read it. Um, sorry, Jean Charles. Donc, euh, il, faut, il faut faire une distinction entre le conseil exécutif et le conseil fédéral. Euh, la description des jobs euh, de, de, de l'emploi au sein du conseil fédéral est disponible sur le site web. Je recommande à tout le monde d'aller jeter un coup d'œil sur le, le poste. And if you're interested in these meetings, it's the same procedure, uh, email governance and ask to be invited. Et si vous êtes intéressé par ces rencontres et ces réunions, simplement envoyez un courriel à gouvernance en commercial partilleur.ca pour être inclus. The executive uh, affirms the interim decisions uh, and that they reflect the will of federal council at federal council meetings. L'exécutif, au fait, est censé refléter uh, le conseil fédéral, les intentions du conseil fédéral dans leur uh, rencontre. So, generally, the executive meets weekly. En général, l'exécutif se rencontre à chaque semaine. Well, the federal council meets monthly. Le Conseil fédéral euh, se rencontre à chaque mois. And most committees meet as required. Tandis que la plupart des comités se rencontrent au besoin. So for me, as a green volunteer, donc pour moi, qui est une bénévole pour les Verts, it would, moving from a provincial rep to the executive, would increase my uh, commitment by about six or eight hours a month. Donc, moi, euh, pour euh, devenir membre de l'exécutif, au lieu d'être une représentante régionale, ça inclut environ 6 à 8 heures de plus de travail par mois. I hope my husband is not listening. <laughs> J'espère que mon mari n'écoute pas. Au revoir. Merci. Merci. OK, thanks, Darcy. Um, John, go ahead. Sure. Well, uh, the first... The first job of any vice president, any organization, is to be able to step into the president's shoes and chair a meeting should that eventuality ever occur. That you just have to be prepared for that. That's why you have vice presidents fundamentally. The, the chair of any council or any board is intended to be and should be a neutral position. The chair doesn't have a position on anything. The chair merely ensures that full debate takes place, that all voices are heard and that where possible consensus is reached and it's true the chair strives for that all the time the vice president would assist with that in the normal course when the vice presidents are not the chair they're perfectly able to have opinions put forward proposals etc i think the more important part of this question though was about the relationships between the executive body and staff 
and here we do, we won't use the C word, um, but we'll talk a little bit about the difference in, uh, in, a, in an organization where there's one individual representing all the staff to the board and the more normal order, order of governance where boards hear from what in business is called the C-suite, the chief executives, the chief technology officer, chief financial officer, chief risk officer, chief executive officer, all of these people report to the board. Um, and in the council that I think we should be trying to put together, that's what we would be doing. So that the finance committee would be hearing not just from the executive director, and it may well be that we get past the restrictions of the Carver model in the current case anyway. Darcy says she hears from these people all the time, so uh, the, the model doesn't really seem to apply. These people come regularly to committees, they present, they have reports that they make in a prescribed format, the format laid down by council, not by staff, and they give those reports to council, and council then evaluates performance, etc. as we talked about before. But the critical thing here is that you have an open interface and an open dialogue between the senior members of management and the members of council and that nothing gets in the way of that and it is regular it is prescribed the information that flows all the time flows on a timely manner there's a schedule of when it occurs things come to council meetings two weeks before the council meets for management and a week before from other people on council and you do these things as a regular ordinary step-by-step -step process to ensure that all the senior management and all of council are well informed about how each other is doing this is how it should be working uh, en français c'est très important je crois qu'il y a une interface ouverte entre le conseil et les, les, les employés, le staff, um, uh, the senior staff. <laughs> J'ai oublié les mots français, my apologies. Um, et les, et les, 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 les staff, les employés, donnent des rapports en forme donnée par conseil à, à période par période, à mois par mois, quartier par quartier, au conseil, pour conseil à avoir les le, le, le meilleures informations possibles de les affaires de parti. Ça donne les informations pour proper gouvernance. Merci. Thank you, John. Okay, for Dave and Kate, um, the question for you is, can the fund rep aid EDAs to enhance their financial expertise? And JC, I'm sorry, you didn't have that in advance. Um, okay, so it, can you just repeat it? Can the fund rep aid EDAs to enhance their financial expertise? Okay, so the question is, is that the representative of the fund rep can aid the ACE to augmenter their financial expertise? And we'll start with Kate. Can you repeat that uh, question? Because I, I didn't hear it, I'm sorry. Can the can fund rep what? Can the fund rep aid EDAs to enhance their financial expertise? That is not the fund rep's job. Um, helping EDAs enhance their financial ability. Um, there are 338 EDAs and Go ahead. Donc, euh, il y a 338 euh, ACE euh, et en ce qui concerne euh, aider leur expertise financière. And we really need consistency over the whole party. So it would make more sense if staff developed a program to aid the individual EDAs. Il faut vraiment qu'on ait une approche unifiée à travers le pays. Donc, ça serait plus utile si euh, les employés étaient pour développer uh, un outil qui serait uh, applicable à toutes les associations. When it comes to finances, the fund doesn't set the budget or make the financial decisions in any case. De toute façon, uh, le trésorier, c'est pas lui qui set le budget et qui prend les décisions financières. The fund enacts the decisions of council. Le trésorier uh, met en pratique les décisions du conseil. And the fund also makes sure that the party finances are properly audited so we can meet Election Canada rules. Et uh, le trésorier s'assure aussi que les uh, finances du parti sont en conformité avec les, le, les lois d'Election Canada. So the party has help available. I believe you have to 
contact support at greenbodies.ca. Donc, je pense que le parti a déjà des outils pour aider les ACE. Je pense qu'il faut contacter soutien en commercial parti vert.ca. And I forgot to send my, uh, set my time. Do I have more time left? Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. Um, it, it, it's really important to recognize, to keep a little bit of separation between the auditing function of the fund and the budget setting uh, function of the council. C'est important de garder une distance entre la fonction euh, déterminante du budget, qui est la fonction du conseil, et la fonction euh, de, euh, Audi, euh, auditing, qui est euh, la fonction du euh, trésorier. So the fund rep has to be um, careful to be the messenger between fund and council. Donc le, le trésorier doit être un messager entre le conseil et um, between what, the council and what, sorry? The fund, the GPC fund. Entre, entre, le, entre les fonds et le conseil, sorry. And, and, and that is why I, as the, the current fund representative, do not sit on the finance committee. Et c'est pour ça que moi, en, en tant que trésorier, je ne siège pas avec le comité des finances. Okay, thank you, Kate. And Dave, go ahead. So it's a great question. Um, and, and JC, I'll need your translation. Um, it, isn't, it isn't the role of the fund rep, but I understand from working at the local level the need for more financial help and tools. Donc, euh, c'est vrai euh, que ce n'est pas le rôle euh, du trésorier euh, d'aider des ACE. Mais euh, étant donné que j'étais actif à une échelle euh, locale, euh, je reconnais amplement que plusieurs ACE ont besoin euh, d'aide et d'assistance euh, financière. Uh, in the uh, run-up to the last election, I was working with some staff of both the GPC and GPO. Um, can you tell me what GPO is? Oh, Ontario, Green sorry. Ontario. Sorry. Um, donc, euh, euh, avant les dernières élections, euh, j'ai travaillé avec des gens euh, du Parti vert du Canada, mais aussi du Parti vert de l'Ontario. Um, to take some of the narrative guides to volunteer management and convert those into step-by-step task-based flowcharts. Uh, et donc, euh, qu'est-ce qu'on a fait ensemble, c'est essayer de convertir une narrative générale pour... Euh, développer des euh, plans qui étaient étape par étape euh, pour euh, les ACF. So, I know this is outside of the, the scope of federal council, but as someone who cares deeply about this party. Donc, je sais que c'est à, à, à l'extérieur euh, des tâches du Conseil fédéral, mais en tant que quelqu'un qui euh, a beaucoup d'amour pour ce parti. I believe that making those clear, visual, task-based flowcharts are very helpful for local Writing associations. Je crois que c'est vraiment utile de faire comme je, je parlais, c'est-à-dire de faire des flowcharts, donc des graphiques qui détaillent étape par étape les actions à entreprendre. Donc, même si ça ne fait pas partie des euh, tâches du conseil, je pense que c'est vraiment utile pour euh, les anciens. So it's not just here's how you should do it in a paragraph, but here are tools, templates, calculators, and the best available advice to make it as easy as possible for us to scale up existing EDAs. Donc, c'est vraiment pas juste d'avoir un paragraphe qui vous dit un peu qu'est-ce que vous êtes censé faire. Moi, je planifie plutôt donner des outils détaillés, des, des calculateurs, euh, des euh, graphiques qui donnent étape par étape euh, des choses qu'il faut qu'on fasse. I know um, locally here, one of the most difficult positions to find someone to take on is the official agent. Donc, à l'échelle locale, je sais qu'une des positions les plus difficiles à remplir, c'est celle d'agent officiel. So we need to make sure that we uh, remove some of the anxiety people have around that position. Il faut vraiment qu'on s'assure de enlever l'anxiété qui accompagne ce poste. Thank you very much. Merci. Thank you, Dave. Okay, Mark, do we have another question from the audience? Yes, Megan. Question from Bert Horwood. He is asking, why are you running? And specifically, what's in it for you personally? Donc, la prochaine question vient de Bert Horwood. La question est, pourquoi est-ce que vous vous présentez? Qu'est-ce que vous euh, y trouvez personnellement? 
Okay. Thank you, Bert. We'll start with John on this one. What's been it for me personally? Wow, a whole pile of work, I expect. <laughs> um, uh, okay, well, here's, here's what. Number one, uh, I was one of the founders of the second Green Party in the world. That's the Green Party in British Columbia in 1983. And I hold these values pretty dearly, even though I did sidestep like some of the others, and I joined the Federal Liberal Party for many years until Mr. Trudeau said that Mr. Harper hadn't done enough to promote the Keystone Pipeline, and I quit. And I back and ran as a provincial green, ran as a federal green, etc. I think right now is the best chance we are ever going to have to unify and reunite and reunify and rebuild the Green Party of Canada. Canada really needs this party. Uh, they, we are positive, we're innovative, we're forward thinking, we have the right stuff, the stuff that's needed now. And green issues now are all over the news. We're talking about guaranteed annual incomes, we're talking about a compassionate approach to people, we're talking about transitions out of the tar sands. All of these things are now top of mind. This is a time for the Green Party to shine, to help build a compassionate and caring society. That's why we're here. And 2020, brings us a whole new leadership team. What an incredible thing. We're gonna have a new council, we're gonna have a new leader, we're gonna have a new executive director. With all of those people unified, the strength is astonishing. And with an engaged EDA group and engaged members behind and with working with a unified leadership, ain't nothing gonna stop us. So we can do this, this is the time to do it. But I've been talking to a lot of members across the country, and what I hear is that people are not very happy. It's like Valerie's comment here on the chat. People see that we've got a party which is very tightly controlled. Greens are not, we're not about control, for God's sake. We are about grassroots. I'm an old grassland guy. Grass grows. It doesn't, you know, you don't hammer it down and say it's just one plant. You, we want the grassroots to be empowered. We want to have those voices come shining through. Pardon me if I get a note here or two. We have a party now that seems to tightly control inter-member communication. That's not a green value. We want to talk to each other. We want to open these things up. We have a party which clearly does not respond to member initiatives. In the last six months, we've had three separate member initiatives well put together by well-meaning members that the management of the party has stifled. There's no better word for it. We have a party that doesn't want to really put a lot of effort behind this election. Look at the work that Megan and her people have done to put these things together. And support from the party has been zero. In fact, it has been negative. This is, these aren't green values. And our previous council, it seems to me, set objectives and, st and strategies without consulting members and EDAs. It didn't tell members or EDAs what those objectives had been didn't objectively evaluate success or failure of those things, has not yet, although I'm glad to see from Joanne that we're gonna have an evaluation of the election, has not yet done that. Didn't report on progress or sex backs. Council has been fractured, couldn't achieve consensus, some people quit. These aren't green values. We can do way better. That's why I wanna do, thanks. Thanks, John. Darcy, go ahead. So I'm, uh, it's unfortunate that we did not get to also comment on the previous question. So I am going to do that. Donc je vais me permettre de commenter sur la question précédente. Um, we don't actually have 338 EDAs. We have 216. I know because I just was uh, was in present at the last uh, EDA formation, which was the 216th. Um, I have been. Oh, sorry. Yeah, on a 216. I have been lobbying Elections Canada to bring Elections Canada training, EDA training to Prince Edward Island for about five years and I finally wore them down two years ago. So we do have Elections Canada training coming to Prince Edward Island now. Donc moi, j'ai passé cinq ans à faire du lobbying auprès de Élections Canada pour justement que les ACL puissent recevoir de la formation locale et finalement j'ai réussi à, à, les, à les convaincre. Donc on a ça maintenant à l'aide du Prince Edward. That's how I got into the party. I do math, I read balance sheets, and ended up as the financial agent for the only EDA on Prince Edward Island in 2011. C'est d'ailleurs comme ça que je suis rentré dans le parti. Moi, je donne ça des euh, jouer avec accès, jouer avec les nombres, et donc je suis rentré comme euh, agente financière dans la seule euh, ACA de l'île en 2011. With every new e e with every new financial agent that I recruit. I offer a one-time only, hands-on election, uh, election or annual return uh, help, <laughs> hands-on help. Donc, euh, à chaque euh, agent financier que je recrute, je lui donne, je lui donne l'opportunité d'avoir une formation avec moi. So why am I running personally? 
I started at the, at the EDA level as a financial agent. I've continued on that process of service. Donc, pourquoi je me présente? Moi, personnellement, j'ai commencé comme agent financier et je continue avec ce processus-là de donner de, de ce, mes services. Stepping up to become a provincial rep, serving four years as the PEI rep. Donc, euh, j'ai gradué et ensuite, je suis, je, je suis devenue la représentante pour la province de l'île du prince édouard et ça fait quatre ans que je fais ça. And in the name of that service to the Green Party of Canada, I'm running as the vice president. Et c'est dans la même lignée au nom de ce service au Parti vert du, euh, Parti vert du Canada que je me présente comme vice-président. And because I don't speak French, I would never run for the president. So this is the only other position I would take. Et étant donné que je ne parle pas français, je ne me présenterai jamais comme présidente. Donc, c'est la seule position que je pourrais prendre. It also gave, presented an opportunity to bring a new person in to represent PEI. Because anytime you're taking a position for more than two terms, you're preventing new people from coming into the party. Donc, ça me donne aussi une opportunité de quelqu'un de nouveau de venir à l'île du Prince-Édouard, parce que quand ça fait plus que deux termes que tu es euh, actif, ça prévient, dans le fond, l'arrivée de nouveau sang au sein du parti. Merci. Thanks very much, Darcy. Okay, Dave, go ahead. Um, I joined the Green Party when I was 19 years old. Um, and it has been a huge part of my life ever since. When I think of the number of close, long-term friendships that I've made uh, during this time, whether it was when I was a member of the Young Greens Federal Council last time, whether it was my provincial involvement, um, I, I feel like um, the Green Party um, is a big piece of, of who I am and has really shaped me uh, into the person that I am. Um, oh, go ahead, Josh. Uh, donc, euh, moi, je me suis joint au Parti vert quand j'avais 19 ans et euh, ça fait vraiment une, une partie intégrale de ma vie depuis ce temps-là. Je, je sens que le Parti vert définit une partie de qui je suis. I have traveled to campaigns in six different provinces to help out or run their get out the vote. Et je me suis rendu dans six provinces, soit pour donner de l'assistance dans des euh, campagnes ou pour euh, aller chercher plus de votes. Donc, je me suis déplacé dans six provinces pour aider avec d'autres campagnes. Um, my, my wife and I are, are married with two young children. Uh, back, back when we were just dating. Euh, moi et ma femme avons maintenant deux, deux jeunes enfants, mais à l'époque, quand on était juste en train de, de se fréquenter. We traveled to London North Centre to knock on doors for Elizabeth May and her first by-election campaign. On s'est uh, joint à London North pour uh, frapper, uh, voyons, pour uh, cogner uh, sur des portes pour soutenir la, la, uh, la candidature d'Elizabeth May. So what's in it for me is I, I think that I probably bleed green. Donc je pense que qu'est-ce que, qu qu euh, qu que je trouve euh, comme rôle pour euh, moi dans ces élections-là, c'est essentiellement mon sang est vert. And why I'm specifically running for fund rep is that I believe we need new leadership on council. Et pourquoi je me présente spécifiquement comme trésorier, c'est parce que je pense qu'on a besoin de nouveau sang au sein du conseil. Um, but council isn't an entry-level job. Mais euh, être membre du conseil, c'est pas euh, un emploi que, que n'importe qui peut assumer. I have broad national experience um, in the Green Party of Canada, and I am ready to represent the members well as their fund rep. J'ai beaucoup d'expérience dans plusieurs domaines, et je connais bien le Parti vert, et je suis prêt à représenter les membres comme trésorier au sein du Conseil fédéral. And that's why I'm asking everybody to make me their first choice for fund rep. Et c'est pour ça que je demande à tout le monde d'être leur premier choix pour euh, représentant des fonds. Thank you, Dave. And Kate, go ahead. Okay. Um, can you hear me? Yeah. Okay. I'm not in this personally. I have nothing to gain and a lot of time to lose, but that's okay because I believe in the Green Party. Donc, je fais pas ça I'm a grandmother. Je fais ça euh, pour, euh, parce que je crois au euh, Parti vert. Euh, au fait, pour moi, ça va représenter beaucoup de temps, 
Je ne fais pas ça pour des, personnes, des raisons personnelles. Je fais ça parce que je crois au Parti vert. I'm a grandmother. I'm trained as a biologist. I'm an organic farmer. I live close to the earth and I can see with my own eyes that nature is hurting. Donc, moi, je suis près de la terre. Je suis une biologiste. Je suis une grand-mère. Euh, je vois avec mes propres yeux que la terre ne va pas bien. Like, I have to do my part. And I have board skills. I have financial skills. And this party needs skilled people. Écoutez, je veux faire ma part. Je dois faire ma part. Et moi, mes talents sont dans les finances. J'ai des connaissances financières et le parti a besoin de ce genre d'expertise. I joined the Green Party because I was coming from another party and I was disgusted by the backroom politics. Je me suis joué au Parti vert parce que j'étais initialement dans un autre parti, mais j'ai été dégoûté par des politiques internes et euh, des, ma des manipulations qui se produisaient à l'interne. So many parties have fallen to the temptation of um, doing anything uh, just to get elected. Il y a tellement de partis qui, sont, qui ont euh, succombé à la tentation de faire n'importe quoi pour se faire élire. I believe that Canada has to have a Green Party of integrity and to put out those green values and actually live the values. Moi, je pense que le Canada mérite et a besoin d'un parti vert qui a des valeurs d'intégrité, mais pas juste qui a des valeurs, mais qui vit ces valeurs-là. Canadian voters are disgusted with political games playing. Les électeurs canadiens sont dégoûtés par des jeux de politique. And so it hurts my heart to have this council election happening and so much negativity and defamation. Donc ça me fait vraiment de la peine de voir que cette élection à l'interne au sein du Parti vert est teintée de tant d'émotions et d'intentions négatives et de propos euh, malhonnêtes. I'm I, I work with the Green Party to try to maintain the green, green values. Moi, je travaille avec le Parti vert parce que je veux essayer de garder et de promouvoir les valeurs vertes. Thank you. Merci. Thank you, Kate. Okay, the next question for all of you is, is it reasonable that federal council's only enforceable option for management accountability is firing the executive director. How else should or could council be able to ensure that policies are followed? And we'll start with Darcy on that one. Oh, I'm sorry, Jean-Charles. Uh, donc, la prochaine question est la suivante. Uh, Est-il raisonnable que la seule option de responsabilisation permettant au conseil de rendre des comptes est de renvoyer le directeur général? Quels autres moyens pourraient aider le Conseil à, à s'assurer que les politiques soient respectées? Et on commence avec Darcy. That's exactly how it works. C'est exactement ça. Uh, sorry? Yeah. No, sorry. Yeah. Uh, in a corporation, it's the CEO. The CEO is held accountable to meet the goals set out by the board. Donc, dans une corporation, c'est le CEO et le CEO doit respecter les, les décisions prises par le Conseil. In a not-for-profit or a political party, it, the executive director is essentially the CEO. Donc, dans un organisme à but non lucratif ou un parti politique, le euh, ch, euh, directeur général est essentiellement le CEO. So, the board, the council, sets direction, the strategic goals, we lay out the budget, we set the planning, then we task our executive director with living up to our expectations, to meeting our goals, to following our plan, and if they fail to do that, we hold them responsible. Donc, It's le quite conseil, simple. Le conseil prend des décisions, délibère, uh, set des objectifs, et par la suite, c'est au directeur général d'accomplir qu ce que le conseil uh, suggère de faire, et s'il n'est pas capable de faire ça, il doit être tenu responsable. It is the responsibility of the executive director to ensure that their staff work to meet our, our aims and objectives. C'est la responsabilité du directeur exécutif de s'assurer que ses employés travaillent pour atteindre les objectifs déterminés par le conseil. Thank you. Merci. Merci.
Thank you, Darcy and John, go ahead. Thank you. Well, um, well, here's a clear differentiation. Uh, Darcy, what you're speaking of there with that sole point of accountability is one way that some corporations and some nonprofits run themselves and govern themselves. In many, many, many others, I would suggest a large majority of others, the board or the council is intimately involved in the hiring and the firing of the senior people, the C-suite. The chief financial officer reports directly to the board in almost every major corporation, not through the CEO, but directly to the board. There's a chief technology officer with the same job. There's often a chief risk officer. These people are people who talk to the board. And these people are responsible to the board for achieving the outcomes that all have agreed upon. Yes, the ED or the CEO is ultimately responsible. And generally, when the board needs to find a scapegoat or a person they want to take responsible, they can the ED or they can the CEO. What happens, though, in that circumstance, it seems to me, is what's happened in our circumstance right now. Because council had very limited knowledge of what's actually happening within the party by virtue of having a single one point accountability to the board, council fired the ED. But council has no knowledge of what's actually going on underneath that caused the dissatisfaction with the level of performance that caused them to fire the ED. So a great part of the board's job is to make sure that it's current with information from the senior executives within the organization in order that the board can properly make judgments about the performance of senior staff. Not everybody, not the people in the mailroom, not the people on the phones, but the senior, the C-suite executives absolutely need to be responsible to the board and the board needs to have, if not direct firing, very, very strong input to say to the CEO, I'm so sorry, the CFO has got to go. That's part of the board's job. Unfortunately, you've frozen right there, John. Pardon me, you talked about that the Darcy is one. Oh, okay. Am I out of time? Or am I still, my internet connection is unstable. Yes, it but is. Think, uh, but do you want to okay. switch to French just for your last 30 seconds? I, I, we, I, 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 we, I, I think I've made the point. Um, Ce n'est pas le mode pro, uh, 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 appropriate pour notre organisation, le seul point d'accountability. Uh, um, sorry, I've got a note here saying council did not fire the ED. Well, the ED was terminated by someone. I'm so sorry about that. Um, the the sole, the, now I'm way off. I'll stop. I said what I needed to say in English. There's no French speakers on the call, so I'm done. Thank you. Okay, thanks, John. And uh, Kate, we'll go to you next. Okay, my, my system is also having trouble, so I hope you can hear me. Uh, Jean-Charles? Yeah, sure. Okay. Um, I don't think it's wise for a political party to have uh, firing the ED to be the only enforceable mechanism. Donc, moi, je pense pas que c'est intelligent pour un parti politique que la seule, euh, le seul mécanisme disponible pour changer les, euh, les données est de euh, virer, pardonnez le terme, euh, le directeur euh, exécutif. And my reasoning is um, both, like, a political party is very complex and it's political. Mon raisonnement est basé sur le fait qu'un parti politique, c'est non seulement une entité très complexe, mais c'est aussi, comme le dit le mot, une entité politique. So I don't think it's fair to an executive director to expect to be fired when the politics don't work out. Donc, je trouve que c'est injuste de, de s'attendre à ce qu'un directeur exécutif euh, perde son emploi quand les politiques ne marchent pas. So I really hope that the, uh, the party will start looking at a better way of in implementing our governance, um, the governance we have now, and possibly changing it soon. J'espère vraiment que le parti va songer à euh, examiner euh, notre modèle, notre mode de gouvernance en ce moment et accepter la possibilité que ce serait nécessaire de le changer. As far as firing the executive director, um, actually the council asks the fund to do that. That's a technicality. But, well, go ahead, John. No, ah, euh, donc, euh, euh, concernant... Euh, le, la perte d'emploi de la part du directeur exécutif, euh, un détail à remarquer, c'est que c'est le trésorier qui, a, euh, qui doit remplir cette fonction. 
Um, a political party goes through stages of growth and we need different skill sets from our ED at each stage. Donc, un parti politique euh, va croître, euh, subir une croissance à plusieurs niveaux. Et on a besoin d'un directeur exécutif qui est capable de suivre le parti à travers ces étapes de croissance. So I really want us to stop talking about firing the ED as if she did something wrong because that was not ever the case. Donc j'aimerais vraiment ça qu'on arrête de parler euh, de mettre une, un, une fin à l'emploi de la directrice exécutif parce que c'était vraiment jamais ça le problème. An organization like the GPC looks for the executive director that fits the needs at the time. Un organisme comme le Parti du Canada cherche un directeur exécutif qui euh, remplit ses besoins à un moment précis. Okay, thank you. Thanks, Kate. Um, and Dave, go ahead. Um, so it, it's, it's normally the case that there are only real absolute recourse is to um, let the ED go. Donc, normalement, c'est vrai que le, le seul euh, mécanisme, c'est euh, de, que le directeur exécutif perde son emploi. But when I was president, uh, we also directly hired the national campaign manager for the duration of the election. Donc, euh, quand j'étais impliqué, euh, on a euh, engagé le directeur de la campagne nationale pour la durée de l'élection. So that was a second recourse. Ça, c'était uh, un mécanisme, sorry. The only other recourse I've heard that John brought up is also firing senior staff. L'autre mécanisme que John a mentionné, c'est aussi simplement de mettre fin à l'emploi euh, des exécutifs euh, seniors. And when I think about the turnover since the election, I'm already getting worried about how much money we must be spending on settlements and severance. Et quand que je pense euh, au nombre de personnes qui ne sont plus euh, avec nous en ce moment, je m'inquiète à savoir les nombres d'argent euh, que l'on jette euh, pour euh, des, euh, de compenser les gens qui ne sont plus avec nous. When I was president of this party, every federal council meeting, the relevant senior staff provided a written or, if they were available, verbal report on the key metrics. Quand j'étais président du parti, euh, les euh, membres seniors, euh, s'ils étaient, étaient disponibles, nous donnaient un rapport euh, sur les métriques euh, qui géraient leur champ d'expertise. I'm not on council, so I'm not in the in-camera session, but all signs point to me as an outsider that the relationship between council and our former executive director broke down. Donc, moi, je ne suis pas sur le conseil et je n'avais donc pas accès aux réunions à huis clos. Mais en tant qu'observateur, les signes pointent tous vers le fait que la relation entre le précédent euh, directeur exécutif et le conseil euh, n'était plus saine. And that's why we need new people on council to work with the new executive director. Et c'est pour ça qu'on a besoin de nouvelles personnes sur le conseil pour travailler avec le nouveau directeur exécutif. To make sure that that relationship stays one of trust and one that is respectful. Pour s'assurer que cette relation euh, en soit une de confiance et de respect. Because even firing someone should be considered a last resort. Parce que mettre fin à l'emploi de quelqu'un devrait vraiment toujours être un dernier recours. Because a hiring process is very expensive to our party. Parce que ça coûte vraiment cher d'engager du monde. Thank you. Merci. Thanks, Dave. Okay, Mark, do we have another question? Yes, Megan. Um, this is a question that I've kind of cobbled together a bit out of a number of comments in the chat and out of a question posed by Sheila Levy. Um, it goes like this. Um, Many people uh, are concerned over the perceived lack of federal council's transparency and accessibility. For example, many members who've registered to observe federal council exec meetings feel it was a waste of time because so much time is spent in camera. What would you do to rectify this? Please comment. 
Um, I don't have a written version of this anywhere. So um, oh, I, I sent it to you in the chat, Jean-Charles, at uh, 432. Uh, can you just send it again real quick? Oh, at 431. Yeah, OK. Hang on. OK, I got it, I think. Um, bon, la prochaine question concerne euh, des inquiétudes que plusieurs ressentent euh, par rapport à l'absence de transparence et d'accessibilité du Conseil fédéral. Par exemple, plusieurs membres euh, qui se sont inscrits euh, pour observer les euh, rencontres du Conseil fédéral sentent que c'était une perte de temps parce qu'il y avait beaucoup de trop de temps qui était passé à huis clos. S'il vous plaît, commentez. OK, thanks. And Mark, do you want to just repeat that in English? The gist of it? Yes. Many members are concerned over the perceived lack of transparency and accessibility of the uh, federal council. For example, this is a comment made by Sheila Levy that many members who register to observe federal council meetings feel that it was basically a waste of their time because so much time was spent in camera. So this issue is the recurrent theme of a perceived lack of transparency and accessibility. Um, please comment. Do you agree? What would you do to improve the situation? Okay, thanks, Mark. And we'll start with this round with Dave. Great question. Improving the observer experience is one of the reasons I'm running. Excellent question. L'amélioration de l'expérience des observateurs est une des raisons principales derrière ma candidature. I think observers should receive copies of all documents discussed at the meeting in advance that aren't part of a closed or an in-camera session. Moi, je pense que tous les observateurs devraient recevoir une copie de tous les documents qui sont discutés lors des réunions qui ne sont pas nécessairement gardés secrets. And that should help, help them follow along. Um, also, when going in-camera, the process needs to be followed, and that involves a motion to go in camera and a report out of the in camera session. Et quand que les rencontres vont euh, deviennent à huis clos, euh, il faut que la procédure soit suivie, c'est-à-dire qu'il y a une motion pour dire que la motion euh, que la rencontre aille à huis clos, et par la suite un rapport sur qu ce qui s'est passé durant le huis clos. As a, uh, I'm not on council, so I don't know what they're discussing in camera. Je ne suis pas sur le conseil, donc je ne sais pas de quoi ils parlent quand ils sont à huis clos. So I can't say they're overusing in-camera sessions, even if it feels that way to me. Donc je ne peux pas dire, déclarer que je trouve qu'ils utilisent trop souvent le huis clos, même si c'est l'impression que j'ai. But I still encourage everyone to observe those meetings because you learn so much as council goes into an in-camera session. Mais j'encourage encore une fois tout le monde à s'enregistrer pour observer ces rencontres parce qu'on apprend tellement de choses, euh, en particulier aussi autour de quand que le conseil rentre en huis clos. For example, on a recent meetings, it was interesting to see that some lawyers and members of the fund board were brought into an in-camera session. Donc, par exemple, ça a été intéressant d'observer dans une réunion récemment que des avocats et des membres d'un conseil euh, financier ont été amenés dans une réunion huis clos. And that can be a clue as to what's going to be discussed in that in-camera session. Et ça, ça peut être un indice euh, par rapport à qu ce qui va être discuté lors de la réunion huis clos. At a recent meeting after an in-camera session, a council member in an open session said that a federal council member quit because we couldn't get rid of a staff member who was a bully. Donc, euh, lors d'une réunion récemment, euh, lors d'une réunion, euh, donc après une réunion à huis clos, euh, on a appris qu'il y a quelqu'un qui a démissionné parce qu'on ne pouvait pas se débarrasser d'un membre d'un employé qui se comportait de manière intimidante envers les autres. Now that isn't a decision, so that isn't going to go into the minutes, but it's something that you would only hear if you were on the call. Ça, vu que ce n'est pas une décision, euh, ça ne serait pas inscrit dans les minutes euh, de la réunion. C'est le genre d'affaires seulement qu'on peut voir si on est inscrit à la peine. So I recognize it's annoying to sit on, an, on hold for hours during these calls, but I've been doing it because I've been learning so much. Thank you. Je sais que c'est vraiment pas plaisant de faire ça, mais en même temps, j'apprends tellement de choses, fait que j'apprécie de l'avoir fait et je recommande à tout le monde de le, de le faire. Merci. Thank you, Dave. Kate, we'll go to you next. Okay. So 
the first thing we need to do is make sure the council agenda go out several days in advance and are available to um, to, to the observers. S'assurer que l'agenda du conseil soit envoyé aux membres et aux observateurs plusieurs jours à l'avance. Whenever I've arranged a, a, an agenda with in-camera items, I always put them at the very tail end of the meeting. Quand que moi j'ai mis des items à l'agenda qui devaient être dans une réunion huis clos, je me suis toujours assuré que ça soit vraiment la fin de la rencontre. And that allows observers to attend starting at the beginning of the meeting and then when they leave, they know that that is the end of the meeting for them. Et ça, ça permet aux observateurs d'être là, présents dès le début de la rencontre. Et euh, une fois que la rencontre euh, publique tient, euh, arrive à sa fin, c'est là qu'eux, ils savent qu'ils n'ont plus besoin d'être là. I think we just need to have a lot of, of respect for observers and members and involve everyone in ways that work better. Je pense qu'il faut juste qu'on ait euh, beaucoup de respect pour les observateurs et s'assurer de trouver des façons qui marchent mieux pour tout le monde. Now, legally, uh, a board or council has to keep some things in camera and um, some things are just, it's just smart to keep them in camera. Donc, légalement, il y a des conseils, euh, les conseils doivent garder certaines choses à huis clos et aussi, je trouve que c'est intelligent que certaines choses soient discutées uniquement à huis clos. So the council has to keep, has to respect the uh, privacy of staff. And so any personnel issues, whether it's staff or volunteers or whatever, have to be in camera. En particulier, par exemple, uh, les uh, choses, tout, tout, tout sujet qui a rapport avec le personnel, uh, on doit s'assurer de protéger la vie privée du personnel, que ce soit des employés ou des bénévoles. Et donc, ce genre de sujet doit être discuté à huis clos. Legal issues, of course, have to be in camera as well. Uh, des sujets légaux aussi doivent être à huis clos. And we're a political party, so we really don't want our opposing parties to know what our politics or our political strategy or our financial capability is. Et évidemment, on est un parti politique, donc on ne veut pas que nos adversaires politiques sachent c'est quoi nos stratégies politiques. Et on ne veut pas non plus qu'ils savent euh, qu'est-ce qui se passe du côté financier et, et à quel point nos, nos coffres sont pleins. So while we do need to go in camera, I think we can do it in a much more respectful way. Donc même si c'est vrai qu'on doit avoir des réunions à huis clos, je pense qu'on est capable d'améliorer les choses pour que ça soit fait de manière beaucoup plus respectueuse. Thank you. Merci. Thank you, Kate. Okay, John, go ahead. Um, well, first of all, I, I have a couple of points. One, it, this sounds a little technical, but they're, they're, I think we're confusing in-camera meetings with closed meetings. In almost all boards around the world, the board meeting ends with an in-camera session. And in-camera means it's just the independent board members. Staff are not there. And that's to allow board members to discuss openly among themselves what the performance of staff has been. And this is standard practice and best practice for boards everywhere. So what we've been calling in-camera sessions are really what are normally called a closed session. So we start with uh, an open session with observers and everybody's part of it and hearing things and people are asking questions, people are reporting to the board, etc. That's a normal open session. And then when the board needs to discuss something that needs to be confidential, as Kate was saying, then you go to a closed session and observers are excluded. Now, like Dave and like all the rest of us, I don't know what's going on in the many, 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 many hours of closed sessions that this council has been having in the last few months, but it does seem to be rather a lot. Where we need to get access to what happened there is a matter for very, very careful judgment between the, the, the chair and the secretary and the other members of the executive, because in some cases, just recording the minutes is, uh, can be a very, very difficult task. Boards, a lot of boards have adopted over the past few years a kind of an American model because they're so terrified in the states of lawyers, a model which just says the minutes say the board decided this, the board decided this, the board decided that. In the old days, I'm an old guy, you used to get what were called narrative minutes where you could look at them and say, a question was brought forward, director so-and-so, counselor so-and-so suggested that we might look at this option. It was discussed and the board decided such and such and so-and-so. I think we'd be much 
much better off going back to that kind of a narrative minute for our purposes so that we could properly show people what board meetings actually, what council meetings are actually about. Um, it, I don't think it's appropriate that all documents submitted to the meeting should be submitted to all observers. That I think would put us in jeopardy. Some things that go to boards are necessarily uh, private confidential documents for discussion by boards and then discussion thereafter. And nor do I think uh, with respect, Dave, that the, the minutes of what I'm calling in-camera meetings. Those those minutes, there's no staff there. Staff don't take those minutes. Staff don't have access to those minutes. That's just the board and the board chair. And the board chair then in normal practice meets with staff to discuss what happened in the in-camera session. The closed parts, yes, those minutes should be taken, but there has to be some careful, careful judgments made as to, thank you, I really I failed to start my timer again, as to when those things should be recorded in the minutes and where it should not, it should, Sometimes minutes will say, the board met in closed session to discuss X, such and such was decided. So that's a matter for discretion and for judgment all the time. And that's why you have counselors or directors just to exercise judgment and discretion. Thanks. Thanks, John. And Darcy, go ahead. Well, of course, we don't prefer to meet in camera. And, and I've made a steady practice of inviting people to come to council meetings I invite it, try and invite at least two people to every meeting. So there's the opportunity there to observe council, the council meetings. We've had more in-camera sessions than usual, and this relates to staffing changes. Obviously, we don't discuss staffing issues and member issues in public. Sorry, Jean-Charles. Uh, that's fine. Euh, donc, euh, moi, évidemment, j'aime mieux minimiser le plus possible le nombre de rencontres à huis clos, mais c'est sûr qu'il y a certains sujets qui, de temps en temps, euh, doivent euh, être, être discutés à huis clos. Ceci étant dit, j'ai fait un, un effort de toujours inviter euh, au moins deux personnes pour venir observer des réunions. So, at the end of each in-camera session, the part that you don't see is when the council sits at the table in camera and decides what to report out of the in-camera session. That's done by green rules, by consensus, like every other decision we make. So after we have an in-camera discussion, whether it be a membership issue or a staffing issue or a finance issue or a whatever other personal issue that needs to be in camera, a legal issue, at the end of that session, when we reach a conclusion, then as a council, we decide what the report out will say. And then that's what we report out, and that's in the minute in the minutes. I agree with Dave. They shouldn't always be tacked on to the end. We do that sometimes for the convenience of people who are waiting when we don't know how long it's going to take. Donc, euh, quand on, on a des réunions à huis clos, c'est important de savoir que les la, la fin de la réunion à huis clos inclut une discussion dans laquelle on se demande qu comment qu'on va décrire et résumer qu'est-ce qui s'est qu produit dans la réunion à huis clos. Et quand on fait ces résumés-là, euh, on les fait avec les principes et les valeurs qui sont dictées par euh, le Parti vert. Euh, je suis d'accord avec Dave que ce n'est pas toujours l'idéal d'avoir ça à la fin, mais on le fait en général pour euh, s'assurer que les gens qui veulent, attendre, euh, qui veulent regarder la réunion n'aient pas besoin d'attendre euh, trop longtemps euh, pour que la réunion à huis clos soit terminée. Thank you. Thanks, Darcy. Uh, Megan. Yes. Uh, if I may, I, I just want I noticed something that uh, John said in reference to one of my uh, responses that I just quickly wanted to clarify, uh, if I can. <clears throat> okay, sure, go ahead. Just really quickly. Uh, John, you're absolutely right. The in-camera or closed session minutes aren't what I was talking about. Uh, those, those, are, those are definitely private. I'm talking about the open session minutes as a draft. Observers should be able to see what the changes are between the draft and the approved. I think we're losing some transparency there. That's what I was referring to. But you're absolutely right about the uh, closed and in-camera uh, in minutes. And I, I apologize to anybody if I gave you that impression. Thanks for that, Megan. Okay, thanks, Dave. So it is 10 to the hour, and uh, I was hoping we would get one more question in. We've done amazingly well, um, but I think we're going to go to closing statements uh, in the interest of time. So for the closing statements, you each will have one minute. And again, if you want to have translation, just let Jean-Charles know and make sure you pause for that. Um, so, so I'm sorry, you will have two minutes altogether for English and French. Carol, are you ready with that? 
Yes, okay, great. And we are going to start this last round with Kate. Go ahead, Kate. Okay, um, the Green Party is at, at a key turning point faced by all political parties in the past. Will we switch to top-down control and breaking rules in, in our zeal to get political power, just like what happened in the Conservative Party, the Liberal Party, and the NDP Party? Or will the Green Party remain a party that puts integrity and honesty in the grassroots first? I believe that Canada needs a political party that absolutely refuses to betray its values. I believe the Green Party can make more political gains by working respectfully. Greens collaborate. We don't demean our op opponents. We win on the strength of our argument. In this election, I've been liable by another candidate's nominators, but that is not the Green way. I believe that the Green Party must show our Green values in order to ensure the, pre the council must show the green values and ensure that the operations show green values as well. I'm running for council because I believe that this party can be respectful and diverse and transparent and open while it drives political change. Thank you very much. Merci. Chimekwech. Donc, euh, le Parti vert du Canada est un point tournant que tous les autres partis ont dû traverser dans le passé. Est-ce que le parti va abandonner son nom à ceux et celles qui veulent une approche descendante top-down au contrôle du parti, qui veulent intimider et briser les règles en échange de pouvoir politique, comme ce fut le cas chez les conservateurs, les libéraux et au NPD? Ou est-ce que le Parti vert va demeurer un parti qui priorise l'intégrité et l'honnêteté avant tout? Je crois que le Canada a besoin d'un parti politique qui refuse de trahir ses valeurs pour avancer. Je crois que le Parti vert peut faire des avancées politiques en travaillant avec respect. Les Verts collaborent. Nous ne descendons pas nos adversaires. Nous gagnons avec la force de nos arguments. Dans cette élection de conseil, les opposants à ma nomination ont tenu, ont tenu des propos diffamatoires à mon égard. Ce n'est pas notre méthode. Ce n'est pas la méthode verte. Je crois que le Conseil fédéral doit s'assurer que les opérations du Parti demeurent fidèles aux valeurs vertes. Je me présente au Conseil parce que je crois que le Parti peut être respectueux, diversifié et transparent et que nous pouvons mener des changements politiques. Merci. Thank you, Kate. And Dave, go ahead. Close in English after French. Uh, merci tout le monde pour uh, participer ce soirée. Uh, J'espère que vous avez appris uh, ce dont vous avez besoin pour prendre vos décisions uh, de vote. Nous avons besoin de changer notre conseil parallèle, et cela signifie que nous avons besoin des nouveaux conseillers. Mais les nouveaux conseillers avons, avaient, avons besoin d'avoir beaucoup d'expérience dans notre parti. Les membres Melou ont beaucoup de positions, incluent le Conseil des Jeunes Verts, représentant de l'Ontario et le président de le Parti Vert du Canada. J'étais une candidate pour le Parti Vert de l'Ontario en 2011 et 2014 et je travaille sur les campagnes dans six provinces. Cette année, on a beaucoup de charges. Nous avons besoin d'améliorer notre communication entre nous et notre collaboration. J'espère que vous me choisirez votre premier choix pour représentant du fond. Merci. Thank you all for participating in this bonus session and thank you once again to the organizers. Great job. I hope each of you on this call have learned something that's going to help you make your voting decision tonight. We need change on federal council and there's no way around it. That means we need to change federal councillors. But federal council isn't an entry level job. Um, new councillors should come in with lots of party experience in other areas. Members like you have elected me to multiple party roles. I was a Young Greens councillor, an Ontario rep, and the party president. I was the campaign committee chair. I was a candidate for the Green Party of Ontario in Ottawa Vania in 2011 and 2014. And I've contributed to local campaigns in six provinces. This is a year of big change for us, and we need to communicate more and work to better together so that our next leader and our new executive director can hit the ground running. I hope that you'll make me your first choice for fund rep. Thanks and have a great evening. Thanks, Dave. Darcy, go ahead. I would just say I've been here before. I'm stepping up on council because I think it's what you do after you've served four years on council and you've done every single thing you can as your provincial rep. I'm stepping up to be the vice president uh, English of council. I'm planning to, 
I sent out an agenda by email. Now, Megan, you unsubscribed from my email list. I was quite surprised to see that. But every other previous candidate, every EDA executive has received an email from me with my most with an agenda of what I think is the most important things going forward. Um, sorry, Jean-Charles, I almost had it right as we were going through. Um, I, I didn't know if you wanted me to do it or not, so. Um. Uh, well, I guess uh, as, uh, as Jean Kidder is skipping it because there are no French speakers on the call, <laughs> I apologize yeah. very much if there are French speakers on the call. My last transmission was uh, Bilang. Um, anyway, I've been here before. It is time to take the party from one stage to the next stage, from the leader we all know and love, the smartest woman in the room, to the next leader who can perform that incremental growth that we're looking for, that one who can get the attention of the media, the one who we can elect in a by-election. That's the leader we need. That's the focus of the party. Getting our EDA up to speed, getting our leadership uh, race underway, having it fair and open and invigorating and exciting and electing that new leader and then giving them all the support they need to go ahead and get elected in the first available by-election, in the next general election, or whatever it takes. That's the role of council, to set the goals, to provide the supports, to uh, operate, to, to supply the strategic direction, and my gosh, to manage the pennies. That's what I've been doing as the chair of the finance committee. Uh, things are changing. They've changed very much in just in the last month. We've been doing very well up until that point and now we're going to have to adjust. So I know what job needs to be done and I'm absolutely prepared to do it. Merci, thank you, Will Allen. Thank you, Darcy. All right, John, go ahead. Well, I'll echo everyone else and thank you so much, Megan and the rest of the organizers, uh, everybody for putting this together. This has been a wonderful exercise in participatory democracy. And that is one of the values of the Green Party, which in my view has not been observed all that well by council. Um, I'm committed to advancing green values. Uh, I think we all know what they are, but I think we, we're missing a few of them. Participatory democracy, I don't think we've done a proper job in respect for diversity. We're committed to working with the whole party to bring everyone's energies in here. You know, I'm part of a group we call Greens for Council, and all of our stuff is transparently up there on greensforcouncil.ca, our full agenda, our full plan of action over the next couple of years. I encourage you to take a look at it. We want full engagement with members and EDAs. We want to invite youth and marginalized persons in to full autonomous participation within the party. We want the operation bilingue, ma francais, mauvais, 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 mais j'essaierai à le make it better. C'est très, très important que nous donne le respect aux gens de Québec. Um, we need full transparency about our intentions as a council. We need to be reporting to members consistently. Uh, and we can do this if we work always towards consensus and we always look for the opportunity to get rid of centralized control. Centralized control is anathema to green values. It's the opposite of what we wish to do. Um, so we've been listening to members. Uh, I'm here to help the rest of our group May, and we have two thirds of the count, two thirds of the candidates for council are in our group uh, to make those changes necessary when we get in. I've done this before. I've worked on boards which have been dysfunctional. I've helped them come to consensus and come to solutions, nonprofit boards and corporate boards. This is good work to do. I'm looking forward to doing it. I'm looking forward to working with all the other people to get elected. And I'm sure those who don't get elected will be serving as well. There is a ton of work to do. And there are so many, many thousands of excellent greens out there to do it. Thanks so much. Thank you, John. And thank you, everybody. That wraps it up for us right on time. My goodness, we've been amazing through this whole series. Candidates, I really appreciate you coming back a second time for an encore presentation. It was fantastic. And I, I think there really is a lot of interest among screen members across the country. So thank you so much for coming back. And Jean-Charles, thank you so much for providing the translation for us. I really appreciate that. And to all the people who joined us today, I am thrilled that so many people have been attending these Zoom webinars. The video will be available on the Nipper uh, YouTube channel in a couple of days. I posted that in the chat at the beginning of the, of the day today. So I think that's a wrap for us. Thank you so much, everybody, and have a great evening. <laughs>